It was the mid-70s. The Vietnam War had just ended, the nation was about to celebrate its 200th birthday, and the U.S. Congress, Treasury, and Mint decided to roll out an extremely ambitious quarter program in order to celebrate the bicentennial. Let's look at what they did. Meet Jack R. And normally when I do these videos, I, the, the person who designed the coin, um, the year they were born, all that stuff isn't as important as just talking about the coin itself from, from a, a hobbyist point of view. Historians would say, yes, that's important. Or true, 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 true coin collectors might put an emphasis on the artist who designed it. But in this case, it is important. Um, he was born in 1931. The contest by the U.S. Treasury uh, was put out to designers to design um, the Bicentennial Quarter. And that happened in 1973. And then his design was chosen in March of 1974 as the design that the United States Mint was going to put on its Bicentennial Quarters. The reason all of that information is important, the reason, it's, the reason it's important to note that he was 42 years old when the contest started is coming up. It's also important to note that in 1973, once again, years and names, but there's a point to it. In 1973, a man named William Smith designed this stamp for the U.S. Postal Service. When the Bicentennial Quarter design was released, William Smith claimed that that quarter the design of the quarter was plagiarized from him that his stamp came out first the quarter came out second that was his design that jack r actually used on the stamp and if you look at the two of them together um jack r claims that the bicentennial quarter design was based on his son keep in mind he was 42 at the time that he designed this um and it looks like the guy in the picture on the coin or the guy stamped into the coin, pressed into the coin, is about 40 years old. And so I am not entirely sure that this design was actually based on Jack R's son. Like, they look very, very, very similar, if you ask me. Um, nothing ever came of the claims. The U.S. Mint sort of diffused the situation, saying, oh, well, we changed the design, we, we changed the face, we changed the drum, we, we altered details. Well, if you did all that, what was the point of paying Jack R $5,000 for a design that you were going to change? So I don't know. Like I said, nothing came of it. I just think it's extremely interesting that this controversy erupted before these quarters actually even hit the streets. The next thing that was unusual um, is that they didn't mint any 1975 quarters, Eisenhower, Eisenhower dollars, or 50 cent pieces. They wanted to flood 1976 with all of the coins. It's also the only year that our coins have had two dates on them, 1776 to 1976, marking the 200-year birthday anniversary of the founding of America. Congress wanted to make sure that enough quarters would be available to everybody and that they wouldn't all be scooped up by hoarders. So the 1976 P and D, they minted 1.7 billion quarters. The 1976 S clad proof, which is the standard S proof coin, not silver, they minted 7 million. The 1976 S silver proof, I went with the number of 4 million, and I'm going to explain why I say I went with. The 1976 S silver clad, they went with 5 million. Now, if you look here where it says 40% silver, so that would be a combination of the silver clad and the silver proof, it says 11 million. Um, the law that was signed by, or the bill that was signed by Richard Nixon that authorized the creation of these coins said that they had to create 34 million silver coins. So... I've seen different numbers on different websites, um, and so I just wanted to highlight, depending on where you go look, you are going to get a different number 
for how many coins. None of none of what you're gonna find in magazines on websites or whatever are gonna reach that 34 million number as far as the silver coins go. But the numbers differ depending on what site you go to. And I just wanted to show that the values. If you look at the 1976 S 40% silver, the one that says 11 million on the graph, if you go over to MS, it has a value of $8.67. Now that isn't the true value. That is an estimated value. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to get that. That doesn't mean that that's what you're going to buy them for. That is just a value, one value from one source. The PR, which stands for proof, so the S silver proof has a value um, on this image of $9.92. So just about $10 a coin. And like I said, that doesn't mean you're, that's what you're going to get it for. That doesn't mean that's what you're going to sell it for. That's just one source. Um, along with, or as a result of their overzealous program, in the 1980s, the mint destroyed millions of circulated or millions of uncirculated and S silver proof quarters. And yet that still left millions out there. Like they went really overboard creating these coins to the point that they had to melt millions of them. Along with the mintage numbers, what also makes this a little bit crazy is the way that they created their proof coin sets and un uncirculated sets that year. So proof sets and silver proof sets, we're used to those. Um, except for this year and only this year, the silver proof set was only 40% silver. So starting in 1992, the Mint relieved, released silver proof sets for every single year. And the silver proof sets from 92 on that you can go out and buy right now, you can buy the 2022, well, not yet, but you this year you'll be able to buy the 2022 silver proof set. Those are all 90% silver. This first original proof set, silver proof set, is only 40% silver. Um, and not to be outdone by creating that confusion, they also included an S mint uncirculated set. We're all used to the uh, yearly Philadelphia and Denver uncirculated sets. They're, you know, clad coins that are sealed in packaging and they have one of each coin minted at the Philadelphia and the Denver mints for that year. But, you know, why not throw in uh, the one and only S mint uncirculated set and to keep it even more confusing? They called it the S mint clad or silver clad to be exact. So Philadelphia and Denver uncirculated sets every year are clad coins. They're just your regular standard coin that instead of getting slid into a roll and sent to banks, uh, they get put in plastic and sold as, as a set, uncirculated, untouched, clean. And they decided to do that this year with the three coins that were minted in San Francisco. That would be the quarter, the Eisenhower dollar S, and the Kennedy half dollar S. And instead of making them clad to match the uncirculated sets that they already release, they made them what they call silver clad, which just means they're 40% silver. So taking a look at these coins, here are the three coins and as what we have are two silver and one clad now looking at them at this angle it almost looks like the clad isn't proof like but it is if you change the angle of the light and look at it it's very reflective it's v oh wait that's not very focused is it it's very proof like so looking at it up close it is proof like anyhow um here are the three coins two of them are silver one of them is not and this is why the 76 bicentennial quarters are so confusing an uncirculated set but with silver coins that they call silver clad on top of a clad proof coin and a silver proof coin that's only 40 percent 
I hope you understand. And, and normal coin collectors who've been through this already know that, and they're probably used to it, and it's probably not quite as confusing. Um, but it's confusing to a new col a new collector when you think you understand that silver proof sets are ninety percent silver. That and then the only other S mint coin that's released in a year is the regular proof set. That's not silver, it's just clad, that's fine. And the other thing is that normal, that new collectors understand that every year there's uncirculated coins that are released that are clad from Philadelphia and Denver. But now we've thrown in a third clad set from San Francisco that we call silver clad that's also 40% silver. So here is what, and I'm going to try to do this, here is what, let's see if I can shrink this down a little bit. I have gloves on, and so it's, here is what the um, silver proof set, I've said here is what, 27 times now. This is the silver proof set. This is what it looks like. This little thing flips up, and here you have the other side. Of these coins and it's not very focused let's see if we can fix that there we go and this is the silver proof set it's 40% silver and these are the only coins that come in the silver proof set for 1976 and then they didn't release or show another silver proof set until 1992 there's also a trick if you ever throw down if you ever have silver coins and clad coins together and I'm gonna hope that this works and you can't tell them apart for whatever reason if you use a Kleenex the silver coins will glow whiter under the Kleenex than a clad coin will so I know that the top one and the one on the right are silver and the one on the bottom left is the proof clad s coin so just to reiterate Shiny proof, shiny silver proof, dull silver clad uncirculated, and it is dull. It looks, the light makes it deceiving, but if you look at it up close, it is not as shiny. What have we done? Hold on. Let's see if we can get that back. It is clearly not as shiny. It is dull compared to the silver proof. And so the reason I wanted to make this video was that as a brand new collector, I found it very confusing when I got to the 1976 quarters because of the three different San Francisco mint coins. And this was the only year that we had these coins, these sets with this amount of of silver in there i'd like to thank everybody for watching this video as always if you have any comments questions concerns or criticisms please feel free to leave them down below i try to answer all po comments posted and as always have a great week